I don't know really how my mother got introduced to Swami. She just says that uh, her mother knew Swami, and that's oh how. Oh my goodness! Kind of so you're a third generation Sai Baba devotee. <laughs> yeah, he is the doer. Is there much that you don't share with Swami? Something big coming up, something not so big coming up? Do you no. mentally, emotionally, in your heart run it by him? He is in our house. He's a family member. He is part of our house. He is there in the morning. As soon as we wake up, he is there. When we go to bed, he is there. He is part of every activity in our life. Sure. Okay, he'll just take a name and say, okay, you're going to get 90%. You're going to get 90% on yeah. your exams? Yeah. And you know the best part? What? He told me I will get an overall 90%, uh -huh. and I did. Did you say, why only 90% Swami? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> you were happy with it. I was 90%. happy with 90%, yes. Yeah. <sighs> Swami has told us many times, interviews, discourses, just in person, be happy. Right? So, I guess the bottom line is that, if you are happy, you are leading a spiritual life. What an amazingly simple yet profound definition of what it takes to be on the path to self-realization. If you are happy, you are leading a spiritual life. The words of Sri Satya Sai Baba as taught to Sai Charun Koduru, who was a student at Sai Baba's ashram schools and university in India for 19 years. Welcome to Soul Germs. This interview was recorded in Coronado, California in the summer of 2015. All the credit is to my mother. Uh, she studied in the Anandpur campus there. Mm -hmm. she, it was, they call it junior college, so probably 74 to 76 or... She was a student. Yeah, my mother was a student. At Sai Baba School, college. Yeah. The, it was the, probably the 12, 11th and 12th grade. Okay. So they, call it, they used to call it junior college there. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember the exact years, probably 74 to 76 or 76 to 78, mm -hmm. sometime then. <clears throat> so uh, I don't know really how my mother got introduced to Swami. She just says that uh, her mother knew Swami. And that's oh how my goodness, so you're a third generation Sai Baba devotee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so she told you a lot about Sai Baba. She knew from first-hand experience. And yeah, so when I got into the school, I probably had no notion of my own. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was a kid, probably five years old, six uh -huh. years old, back in 89. Sure, what did you know? Exactly right. <laughs> uh, all the credit is to my mom and my dad. Uh, back then, even my dad was not really a devotee. It, he was he he didn't lean either way. He was like, okay, if my mom thinks it's good, let's try it. Yeah. So that's how it all started. And uh, I came in. I my mom had studied here, so she's like, okay, I think it's a good place for my kids to be there. And uh, there I was. I took the entrance exam, um, and I got admitted. So. And I probably... What kind of an entrance exam for a five-year-old <coughs> is there a bet? It's an aptitude thing. Okay. So, Yeah, it, it's a very weird thing, actually. If you say India is a very competitive country. Mm -hmm. So IITs are like the pinnacle of um, achievement. It's like the, the Yales and the Harvards of here. Yeah. So IITs are there. And kindergarten, they, they actually have campuses for kindergarten they do. geared towards IIT coaching. Oh, so it's a very competitive goodness. country. So, yeah, so now they, they've so got put in the education incubator at a very early age. Yeah, really, yeah, it, it, it seems to be going that way. So I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, to answer your question, I think it was simple things like uh, given a triangle, how many sides to it. Uh -huh. you know, little simple things. Simple aptitude test. Yeah, simple, very simple aptitude test. I probably don't even know what I was doing there. <laughs> <coughs> mm, yeah, and I got through the entrance exam and I was there. I spent uh, my education there. I had all my education there. What I'm told, you spent 19 years as a student at Sai Baba School. Many, many students pass through Sai Baba's schools. Um, not always do young people have equal access to Sai Baba, but just give me some, um, I think all of us would like to know what your experience sort of looked like in the aura of Sai Baba, <coughs> who created all those schools. To me, the education, uh, if, you, if you look back, you know, people retrospect a lot, and a lot of people have asked me, would you change anything you've, if you 
were given an opportunity. I was like, I, I'm always like, the 19 years I spent in school, I would not trade that for anything. Mm -hmm. So we had a very uh, strict and tight regimented schedule. So like if you get up at 5.30 or so, 5, 5.30, super bathroom, then you got to be in the ground, you have to have exercise. Mm -hmm. Then you have breakfast, you go to school. Yeah. And then uh, by three or so your school is done, then you go to the mandir. Mm -hmm. You spend a lot of time in mandir. That's, I. if you think about it, I think a lot of uh, personal growth happens there. In As the Mandir, in the which Mandir. is a temple, which is back when you were there, where Baba would come twice a day, usually yes. around 7 o'clock in the morning. Mornings and, and about four 3, 4 in the afternoons. And I yeah. remember being there, you know, Jody and I have made maybe 18, 19 trips there, where we would see throngs of youth yes. Come yes. charging yes. in yes. for good seating positions. Yes. Yes, uh, and it would just fill up the whole front of the Mandir very quickly. Yeah, and I often wondered, you know, Baba allowed you to bring your books, and kids were chattering away as they waited the obligatory two or three hours for yeah. Baba to come. Yeah, um, what was that like? I'm always curious to yeah. know from a student's perspective what that was like. So, um, as long as I was in the primary school, so that's grade one through mm -hmm. seven. I don't remember being allowed to bring books. You just had to sit there quietly. Yeah, and imagine kids, <laughs> we were between 6 yeah. and 12 years old, mm -hmm. you have to sit there quietly. Yeah, hard to do. Hard to do, but we we kind of got through that. <laughs> so you know, we did our whispers, we did our this and that and so on, but it was most of the time you, you had to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And that, I guess, again, well, retrospectively, that's a very hard thing to do as a child. That's a hard training. Exactly. Maybe one of the hardest for a child. Exactly. So I personally think, looking back, that probably that's where a lot of things where you calm your mind mm -hmm. and control. Uh, it was not really control anymore, right? It's it's just natural to you now. Yeah. It's like you breathe, so you can actually stay calm, right? Mm -hmm. We were not told to meditate. We were not asked to sit straight. We were not asked to you know do this, do that. We were just asked to sit there. Yeah. Without talking. So you sort of became contemplative, if that's the correct word, or reflective, because you had no alternative for those hours. Uh, I guess the part of being reflective and contemplative come, came later. Mm -hmm. I really don't know what I did in those <laughs> few, first few years, seriously. Yeah, I, I, I can only imagine. I would have been climbing the walls, I Exactly, think. right? So, you know, I remember we dozed off and, you know, this and that, and uh -huh. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure of, I've been woken up by Swami walking past and hey, Swami's coming. Yeah, you know, yeah. you were we were kids and you know we wake up quite early in the morning. If, if it is a Sunday or in a holiday or you know a festival day, we come for the morning darshan too, right? So we had like fifteen hundred kids in the hostel. Mm -hmm. They needed to be all bathed, fed, and brought into the mandir. So we wake up quite early on certain occasions, right? Yeah. So you doze off. You tend to do a lot of things, but. Yeah, I guess it started there, but being contemplative, reflective, a lot of time to think. It's mm -hmm. like being in the mountains, right in the middle of the crowd, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a very... Uh, or as they would say here, being on uh, Times Square on New Year's Eve. Exactly. Alone. Alone. I, I don't know if... <laughs> Surrounded uh, if by a million people. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like that, but I guess a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, growing up happens there in the mandir. Right, that is one example. The other things are when Swami comes to you and asks you things you're like you're always dressed well, you don't ever come shabbily. Why? Because you want to be presentable. Because why? Mm -hmm. Because Swami likes it to be that way. I always notice that without exception. And did Baba ever come to you? To me in 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 as he's walking through the mandir. Oh yeah, so. Swami is, you know, uh, materializing vibhuti. He's trying to give, uh, you know, as a medication, whatever. He's mm -hmm. going to give devotees that, right? So we're always uh, ready. You know, we have a handkerchief in the pocket. Mm -hmm. It's always neatly. So he can, yeah, he can wipe his hands with that. It's an opportunity, right? So those are the kinds of things that I've done. And when specifically, if you want to know whether Swami came to me, yeah, every year we had this very, very uh, nice opportunity. Uh, on our birthdays, you get to fill a tray with chocolates and saffron rice, saffron and rice and uh, cloves, uh, uh, cloves, and, and right? he would sprinkle the rice over your, Hills, over your head. Yeah, it's 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 an Indian form of blessing. Mm -hmm. So that's how the ancients used to bless us. 
So when it, the blessings are always with uh, saffron rice. And the cloves are there for a very distinctive reason too. Yeah, he takes that clove and puts it in his mouth mm -hmm. and he blesses the rest as prasad. Uh -huh. And the chocolates are the fun part, right? So it's always a, so your, your chocolates are filled in the tray mm -hmm. and there's only so much that can fit in the tray, right? So it's always a, uh, a tug of war between you want Swami to throw some, but mm -hmm. not too many away? To the crowd. Yeah, right. because you want to keep yeah, those. You want to keep right? those. It, it's and, and, and you don't want to eat the other, other ones you keep. Yeah, you want to keep them, right? <laughs> and you want to eat them like slowly, yeah. like savor them. Uh -huh. Swami's blessed them. I will get this only after one year yes. again, right? So those were things, very, very uh, uh, fun things we had uh, memories of. Um, so if you remember the mandir on the yeah. veranda, mm -hmm. right outside the interview room? Yes. When we were kids, that's where we used to sit for blessings. Boy, the ashram were, was very small. Very, very lucky. Oh yeah, I mean, I must thank right outside my mother the interview for that. room. Sorry. Right outside the interview room. Oh yeah, yeah. Not just outside the interview room. So when bhajans were mm -hmm. about to start, Swami comes outside the interview room. Just as he's entering to the mandir, into the bhajan hall, he just motions with his fingers to come forward mm -hmm. and see a huge rampage for like fraction of few seconds. Right? We all go there yeah. <laughs> and. We are a few feet away from the bhajan hall door. Uh, we are leaning on the interview room wall, and we are there, and that's where we get to do bhajan. Yeah, it was fantastic. And Swami is watching you. We are, you know, trying to arrange. You want to, you want to keep the tray. You have a tray in front of you, right? <laughs> you need it to be neat and presentable. It, it's got to be spotless, oh, pick yeah. and span, right? We're trying to arrange that, and Swami is looking at you and what you're doing. As mm -hmm. a kid, you really don't have a notion of a bhajan, sure. spirituality, and all those things, right? And Swami is very understanding of that. He's not going to say, hey, do bhajans. <laughs> he's just watching you and like a mother watching a kid. Mm -hmm. He's just watching you having fun. And he's watching, having fun. He's smiling. These are memories that I, I personally cherish. And you probably also <coughs> cherish the memories of your classmates who um, may at any given time might have been celebrating your birthday and they were right beside you or down the line from you. And oh, yeah. Baba must have come very close to you yeah. as a result of that many yeah. times. Yeah. So all those things, so birthdays, I mean, much of our life there was spent around looking for opportunities mm -hmm. to get close to him, to get uh, proximity, Yes, a smile, a nod, much just a glance. Much of the life of everybody who ever went to Prashanti Nilium right. spent their time doing that. Right. They might be 85 or 8, it doesn't yeah, matter exactly. much. exactly. It's just that as kids, we had no, why we, we had no idea why we are doing it, but we are doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's like you are a, a, a little child trying mm -hmm. to do something to please his mother. He has, he has no reason for that. Well, as you grew older and this started to establish a routine, did you ever become a little bit jaded? Did it get to be too familiar for you? Or was it always sort of an interesting time when Swami would uh, visit during the Mandir hours when he would come? Uh, personally, I cannot say that I've not been jaded. I, I do remember times I was complacent. Mm -hmm. It is just that like when you're in college, you have responsibilities, you have assignments. Sure. You're, you have those. And you're pushed real hard. You're busy. Right. So you have to do those. So once we get to college, we were allowed to bring in our books. Yes. So if there's an exam time, you're actually looking through the books because you want to get good marks there too. because. And I see, good and I see students. Important. I see students always uh, sharing stories with one another too, or asking questions. Yeah. So I interrupted you. So you, getting good marks are imperative. It's very important because um, there was one year. So in 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 India, the Swami School is actually affiliated with the Central Board of Secondary Education. It's called CBSE, mm -hmm. right? So it's the it's the central government uh, board which does the education system. And they have an exam for your 10th grade and your 12th grades. It's something like an SATs, but it's you know a government uh, kind of. Uh, uh, they, they give out the exams and they, they control the whole thing. So it's like very systematized thing. Mm -hmm. And that 10th grade and 12th grade are major benchmarks, right? You don't want to mess up those two. So the reason I bring that that up is that those exams happen in March. And a lot of times, usually by March, Swami has actually go, gone on to Whitefield. The, the, mm -hmm. the Brindavan campus, yes. right? This particular year that I was in 12th grade, he decided to stay back in Prashantaniyam. Ah. Okay, so 
you had your exam. So usually during that time, when so when the board exams are there, SOM is not there. So you know your entire focus can be on education, on your growing, on your getting your good marks and all those things, right? But now you were distracted. No, that's the best part. So this, this is something uh, I, I have to admire in him. He is there and he knows that we have to perform well because our parents have put him put us in that school primarily for education, right? It's like the bait. Mm -hmm. For him, it's the bait, but he also understands that the bait is important, right? So, what he used to do was every day after the exam. So the exams are actually spaced out. You have an exam on Monday or another on Friday or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. They're spaced out. Whenever there's an exam during that time, after the exam, we would all rush to the mandir, and Swami would come and sit and say, you know, okay, he'll just take a name. And say, okay, you're going to get 90%. You're going to get 90% on yeah. your exams. Yeah. <laughs> he'll call and say, he'll call and he'll look at another boy, or he'll take a name and say, you know, you didn't do so well in this paper, <laughs> right? And you know the best part? What? He told me I will get an overall 90%, uh -huh. and I did. Great. And did you believe him when he told you that? Yeah. So when I he, so. Did you say, why only 90% Swami? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> you were happy with it. I was 90%. happy with 90%, yeah. <clears throat> so here's the thing. So his motivation, he kept the motivation up. He knew that doing that will motivate us to study. And when we study well, we get good marks, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's reciprocative. Yeah. He's, he's there to make sure that we are we, 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 we achieve what we set out to do mm -hmm. or what he set out for us to do, right? And one of the most fondest memories I have of that time is when he uh, was... So after every exam, he would say, you know, this paper you, you get X and this paper you'd get Y for people who are, you know, who have done well in that mm -hmm. paper, right? Towards the end, after all the exams are done, that's when he gave the cumulative grade, mm -hmm. right? He called three of us, three or four of us, and called us and said, Chesco. So he was like, take Namaskar. Okay. So we took Namaskar and said, okay, you'll all get 90%. And we all got 90%, all four of us. Right? Really? Really. And for me, that is the most cherishable memory that I, one of the most cherishable memories that I have sure. interacting with him personally is, after the exams was our summer vacation, mm -hmm. we all went home. We came back and the first thing that happens, we came back, it's a two month vacation. We come mm -hmm. back in June 1st. Mm -hmm. It's always June 1st. The school opens. And the first major uh, festivity uh, in Prashant Liam is Guru Purnima after that, right? Yeah. That year, Guru Purnima, Swami announced that uh, he will stop doing giving Pad Namaskar. Maybe you remember this. I right? do remember that. Right? From that year forward. Yeah. So. Although he didn't quite live up to that. Yeah, so... <laughs> but he uh, meant it. Yeah, he meant it. And I remember quite a few times after that he rebuked us saying, no, I told you not to. Mm -hmm. right. right. So, so he, for me... So he meant it, but and yeah. that's when he announced it, and that was your return from vacation. Yeah, time. so for me, it, the most important and memorable thing was... So when he announced that, or when he, when he said that, you know, he would like to stop uh, giving a namaskar, he kind of... Uh, I, think, I, I think I vaguely remember he said that if you take namaskar, it's of no use until I say so. Ah. This is what I vaguely remember. Okay. Okay. And for me, that became very important because after the exams, he called us and said, Chesco. Uh -huh. So that was a huge blessing for me looking back. Right. He said that when I tell you to take namaskar, it has a lot more yeah. value to it, there's a lot more blessing with it. So it was right? his grace and his invitation. Yes. And who could resist? Yeah. So So that had to be one of the most memorable times. Yeah, it's one of the most memorable things I, I have from that time. And so he gave me a memory he gave me a very fond memory. He gave me a lot of blessing and he gave us a lot of motivation to study through the exams. Oh that's great. Now with Prashanti, your wife, you married a Baba schooled young woman, right? Yes. From uh, Anantapur? Yeah. How did that come about? So, <laughs> this is a very interesting story. Uh, so, 
She studied in Anantapur, like you said. So students who've graduated from Anantapur are given this uh, opportunity to do seva when they, whenever they can come to Prashantanya. Mm -hmm. So in the Dasha of 2010, she had come back during her master's to do seva. And uh, my mom also is an Anantapur alumni. Mm -hmm. So she was already doing seva there. And since my mother has been around, um, Prashanti was tagged along with my mom to, you know, kind of get familiar with the, with, with the regulations, with the routine and so on and so forth. So at that time, uh, that's how actually my mom met Prashanti and it, it all started from there and, you know, it, it kind of snowballed into an engagement and in this marriage. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, <coughs> Had you been just a little younger, maybe Baba would have married the two of you. Yeah, actually, I still think that he did, because um, after our engagement was set, so Swami had initially started. Swami had kind of started uh, uh, permitting students to visit him mm -hmm. batch wise. So people who graduated in eighty nine, ninety, and so on and so forth. Even though I graduated in two thousand six, uh, we got an opportunity to be the second or third batch to come as a group to Swami mm -hmm. and Swami had allowed our parents to come in with us and he talked to us in the private talked to us privately in the Purnachandra auditorium and after that he gave us all namaskar and that okay so my uh, our engagement had just kind of been finalized and uh, my mom and dad you know took the uh, the the sari which is to be worn ceremoniously for the wedding the Mangal Sutram, which in Indian in Indian traditions, you actually the husband uh, tra ties a, uh, a, a sacred thread uh, as a symbolism of marriage. Yes, and that that is actually a golden. Uh, there's a there's a locket of gold, which is a very again a, a it's kind of a blessing. Mm -hmm. So we got that also blessed by Swami, and the following March, uh, so we got married on March twentieth. And on April 24th, Swami took the Samadhi. So mm -hmm. I think he yes, did he, this for us. Yeah, it, it sounds like you've had yeah. enormous blessings and great oh, grace. See, uh, I, I, I am yeah. I'm very grateful to Swami for that, yes. So Sai Charan, what's your future? How do you size up what your role in this challenging world is going to be? I, I try not to do that because that will make me the doer. Mm. So to me, it is about Swami doing things. Uh, even while we were in the car, Prashanti was telling me, uh, she was reminding me, uh, did you tell Swami to you know, do the interview that we are doing now? I was like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. did that. So that's another thing which we kind of um, got ingrained to us ingrained in us over the many years mm -hmm. is that he is the doer. Is there much that you don't share with Swami? Something big coming up, something not so big coming up? Do you no. mentally, emotionally, in your heart run it by him? He is in our house. He's a family member. Uh, that's how we we'd like to run our household and that's how we've been trying our best to do so far. He is part of our house. He is there in the morning as soon as we wake up He's there. When we go to bed, he's there. He's part of every activity in our life. So if somebody's watching this and they're new to what this subject is, they're probably waiting for me to ask you, who is Sai Baba? It's a very personal question. Yeah. So to me, if you want to put it in words, I've, I've been using this phrase in all my dedications and the various theses that I've done. He's my guru, guide, and God. Your guru, guide, and God. Yes. Um, but to put it more personally, he's my mother. He's my father. He's my everything. I, I think my dad best described this. So when I was kind of graduating, uh, at one time, uh, Swami had given us some mementos in the mandir. You know? So after I graduated, my dad asked me, what do you want? I was like, I don't want anything. You know. I'm, I'm happy, I, I, mm -hmm. I, you got me through Parthi and I've had a nice time. I had a lot of fun growing up. I had everything and my dad was like, exactly why I'm asking you because Swami didn't give me a chance to give you anything. <laughs> you gave, he gave he you gave everything. everything. Yeah. Swami gave us, so uh, 
you know, uh, he, he gave us very good clothing. He gave us material, clothing material, and he gave money to get those stitched. And he would come back and ask, did you get it stitched? He gave us watches, he gave us shaving razors, he gave us toilet kits, he gave us soaps, he gave us hand towels, he gave us notebooks, Camera. cameras. He, he <laughs> gave us everything that materially we, we would desire as a kid growing up. My, da my dad and mom did not have an opportunity to buy me anything. Uh, the, the, the question that begs to be asked is, how did Swami do that? That's, that's something I would not venture to answer because he's God and he's my mom. And how many dozens, hundreds, and thousands of students is ar are around him? Exactly. Were around him. Yeah. So he was there for all of us through, through our material things. That's amazing. And through our spiritual things, yes. So my dad said it best. That he, he's everything for you. He did everything for you. And I, we've, we've actually not paid one penny for education. We've paid only for boarding. Mm -hmm. And that was nominal. Yeah. <sighs> Swami has told us many times, interviews, discourses, just in person, be happy. Right? So I guess the bottom line is that if you are happy, you are leading a spiritual life. Mm. Never heard it expressed that way before. I actually had this opportunity. I was talking to Prashanti recently and she was asking me and I was telling her. So she asked me, did you talk to Swami something anytime? And did you ask him anything? So there was this one time where, uh, you know, at the university convocation, mm -hmm. they have actually a, a, a skit which is presented, a right. drama. So after one such drama, I had an opportunity to be uh, around there and when Swami was, you know, uh, giving photographs to all the participants in the, in the skit. I had an opportunity and asked him, Swami, are you happy? I kind of was uh, referring to the drama. Mm -hmm. but he gave me a very interesting answer. He's like, I'm always happy. Are you? <laughs> so I guess that's the more important thing. Being spiritual is not, it, it's, it's a state of mind. It's about a state of being. So spirituality, again, is not religion. They are two different things, yes. right? Yes. Religion is about the rituals and mm -hmm. other things which go with it. But it has the other shade of it, which is about being happy. And if you have to be happy, you, you will do the things that are needed to, to keep you happy, right? You will m make sure others around you are happy, your family is happy, right? So I guess the m more important, the, the way to answer your question is, are you happy? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Thank you very much, Sai China. Thank you. Tim. And good luck in Seattle and with Prashanti and with the rest of your life. And may it be very bountiful and very happy. Thank you so much, Dad. Sairam. Sairam.